Hello everyone, this is James Shore with another Test Driven Development video. I'm here at the Erdev Conference in Malmö, Sweden, and I have here with me Kim Grossman, somebody who I've corresponded with for several years and who was a reviewer on uh, my book, The Art of Agile Development. And um, Kim happened to be at this conference as well, and I'm really happy to have run into you here. And um, he's graciously agreed to do some pair programming with me. So thank you very much for joining me. Thanks for having me. So this is our second episode together, and when we wrapped up last time, we had just finished uh, revising the tests on the alternating row table. So um, I was talking about uh, writing a test around what, whether, how it works when there's a, a header, and I was thinking about doing that, but I wanted to get your thoughts on what we should do next. Um. I'm not sure, actually, as far as the UI. I think it's it looks pretty good the way it is. Okay. Um, but except maybe for it's one thing that struck me was there. There's no window title. I'm not sure if that's a. Oh, that's a good point. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of little things that yeah. still need to be fixed in this, aren't there? Um, yeah, maybe what we should do next is get our our custom application frame going. Uh, I think that would be probably a useful thing to do. It um, might be a challenge. It might be a challenge, <laughs> which, um, you know, and if that turns out, I mean, some of this stuff is the kind of thing that I have to go off and research offline uh, or off the video, and if it turns out to be one of those things, it's probably not the best use of, of our time together. Right. No. But um, what do you think about putting that test in with, with the column headers? Oh, sure. Yeah, that's a great start. Okay, so let's, let's do that. Um, I think, and I think that won't be too hard. Now, you told me earlier that you're a C++ programmer, so I take it you don't know how to do that in Swing. Uh, not off the bat, no. No, I, I don't really either. <laughs> <laughs> so let's, let's just try it. I think what we'll need to do is we have to change the table model in some way. Um, in fact, I know we're doing it right now inside of our application class. So, oh no, we're not doing it inside of our application class. We're doing it inside of um, our stock market table model. Well, that's that's different. That's not very. Yeah, helpful. that's the other way around. I think. Yeah. Want to get rid of the columns, right? Um, let's see. So there's got to be some way to tell the default table model. Uh, there was an add column. I'm not sure if that's... Uh, a what? Add column. I think that's different. Oh. I think that's if you want to add columns. Oh, okay. I think, the column headers. Right. Yeah, I think this is it. Set column identifiers. I, I'm going to take a guess and say that that is it. And uh, let's see if that works. Okay. It does. Uh, now, I've made an assumption that that does what we think it does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which... So, uh, in order to validate that oh, assumption, no, that's a good idea. I'm just, just... going to. Yeah, just sort of toss it in here. Yeah. Huh. That doesn't seem to exist. Oh, oh because it's not a default, no, it's not a default table, table model. But that's okay. Um, it's just a hack. I will just pull this whole thing over real quick. <laughs> Because I don't want to have to figure out how to make it show up in a frame. No, and so forth. people are watching. What? People are watching. <laughs> people are watching the <laughs> hack. Well, as you well know, <laughs> that's really nothing new. Let's see. Okay. Yeah. yeah there we go. Okay. So that does good. that does work. Okay. Now I'll undo. Better? Yep, I'm glad. Oof. That was scary. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, so there we go, and um, our test pass, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that Good. does it for. I, th I, 
I think that does it for the alternating row table. Um, the other thing, there's one other thing that I was thinking about, though, with this. I'm, I mean, I know you'd like to move on to something else, but I want to finish this. Um, and that is, I'm not sure if alternating row table is a great name for this. Oh, I was just thinking that, actually. Well, what were you thinking, then? Uh, I didn't have a good suggestion, but it, I don't know, it seems kind of funny. Yeah, my, my gripe with it is that I want, I want the name of this class to reflect the purpose of the class, not the implementation of the class. I mean, the fact that it alternates rows seems to be an implementation detail. Um, and in the future, we might use the same table, but decide to change it so it doesn't have alternating rows. I mean, maybe we'll have it do something else. I don't know what, but... It, so, I wonder if it's a prognosis table rather than not. Oh, that's interesting. So what is... <laughs> A prognosis table? Is that what you said? Yeah. I have to I have to put that into my dictionary. Prognosis. Oh, really? <laughs> isn't, that a, isn't that a word? The likely course of a disease or ailment. Oh, you know, right. I think you <laughs> No, a forecast. That's, that's pretty much what I meant. <laughs> so, I don't know. I mean, calling this program a, a, a disease or ailment seems kind of appropriate to me. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think a forecast was what I was after. A forecast table. Yeah, yeah like I that. like that. I like that. Uh, something I had considered uh, when Roy and I were working together was calling a ledger table, but I oh, like okay. I like forecast even better mm -hmm. because that is really what this yeah. is about, and that that's going to encompass things like it's not editable, it's right. you know there's all kinds of things that we can do with that. So that's really nice. I like that a lot. Okay, so there's that one, and um, there's that one. By the way, if at any point you feel like driving, just let me know. Okay, no, I'm, I'm a bit uncomfortable with the Mac keyboard, so I'm yeah. unfortunately... Yeah, I, I don't blame you. Um, <laughs> if any time you want me to type something, just let me know. Okay, I'll scream. Uh, yeah. But there's there's a problem there with you name the table forecast instead of forecast table. I'm not sure if that's a problem, actually. That might be a good idea. Um, mm. I, it was not intentional, and I think because this is a UI yeah. thing, yeah. I think it should be called forecast table. Okay. Nice. So there we go. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. Mm -hmm. So what should we do next? Um, yeah, well, I had an idea for sales, but I'm not at all sure how that... Yeah, there's there's a number of things we could do, I think. Um, let me go ahead and bring up the actual mm -hmm. app. Um, so, as you know, this is a program to replace a spreadsheet that, I, that I'm using, and unfortunately I don't feel comfortable sharing that spreadsheet uh, with, with people online. <laughs> um, because I know most of you out there are nice people, but some of you aren't, unfortunately. Um, and the spreadsheet, the way it works is basically what I have is I have a budget, and it says that my yearly expenses are this much. And what it does is it just calculates the difference between my income and my yearly expenses, and if I have a surplus, it deposits it, and if I have a... Oh, okay. uh, if I have a uh, to whatever the word is, a little jet lagged here. Um, anyway, if I don't have a surplus, if I need to take money out, it sells out of the stock market. Okay. So earlier you had mentioned doing a year by year sale, but that's not actually how the spreadsheet works. It's just uh, it calculates how much to, to sell yeah. or buy every year. But, but is the budget yeah. also a forecast, or is it actual? Uh, the budget is forecast uh, in the. Ultimately, what I have is I have a list of upcoming expenses like buying a car or putting a new roof on the house in 20 years or painting the house every 10 years or something like that. Um, that's not something I think we'll put in soon. What we could do is just put in some of these basic things like the starting balance. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's a Ooh. test waiting to happen. Look at that. That shouldn't work that way. That's strange. That is because um, we didn't do something. So uh, we'll come back to that in a moment. <laughs> um, so one thing we could do is fix that bug. Uh, another thing we could do is implement some UI around these figures that I can't point at. The starting balance, the cost basis, uh, the interest rate, the tax rate, everything that's hard coded right now, we need that to allow the user to type those things in. And then you had also mentioned just doing some, like putting a title win uh, oh, yeah. title on the window. That's and actually like that. something we might accomplish. So that might yeah. be a better idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, doing doing the whole UI with the, the input field yeah, and no. stuff, we could get started on, but I think it's a pretty big, yeah. a pretty big task. That'll take ages. 
Yeah, and I actually want to get the UI really well polished before I start adding new features. Um, I think this is one of those sort of contracting cycles. Um, so let's say we fix this first, though. Uh, that little bug yeah, right or there. Or we save that and do the title bar first, because that'll, that'll probably teach us something. Or, well, maybe, maybe I, too much, though. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I hate to move on to something new yeah. while we have a bug yeah, in the system. Uh, and I think I know what this is. Okay. Um, so let me let me show you what what I think is going on here. In the spike, I borrowed this code from from these folks here, uh, and in the spike they have this little line of code right here. If the cell is selected, don't style it. Basically, is what it says. Um, and we don't do that in our forecast table. Right. So we could either write some code to just deal with that one issue, or um, we could modify this code so that it's not possible to select tape, uh, cells. Don't you want to be able to select cells, though? I'm, to... I'm not sure why I'd want to. Um, um, uh, for cut and paste would be one reason to do it, I think. Okay, yeah, that's true. Um, okay, I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> um, but cut and paste doesn't actually work properly right now anyway. Yeah, I know. So one thing we could do is just disable selecting mm -hmm. entirely. So what are, what are your thoughts on that? I don't know. I've to me, this code is is broken, and it seems like a good idea to fix it. Well, even if I don't know, because <laughs> the whole selection thing, I think, is going to come back. So I, I think I'd want that to work. Okay, I think that's a a reasonable argument. Um, so, and it is nice to be able to point at things. Like yeah. when when I was, you know, trying to illustrate how this works. Yeah, it, it went haywire. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, let's let's go ahead and do that. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Uh, one of the, I have to admit, I was being a little bit lazy. I don't know how to programmatically <laughs> select a cell. Hey. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so this will be interesting. So let's go ahead and take um, this test here. Oh, that's good. And put it down here and say that table row should not style at all style at all, or should not style rows that are selected. Okay. Um, so, so how do we select the row? Well, that's a good question. Um, I think we might be able to tell the table model to select a row. Nah, you think? Uh, or I don't know. Why not the table? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm. I'd try the table if I were you. Not much. <laughs> hint, hint. Hey Jim, um, I don't have the keyboard, but I'm telling you what to type. <laughs> okay, so let's take a look at the table. So. There's clear selection. Okay. So that's promising. Well, I, there's a lot of methods in here, and I think I confused it. Uh, set selection, um, selection, selection mode. mode. Yeah. And a selection model. Selection. Wow. Okay. Well, um, this is interesting. We are out of time, so maybe off off video we can spend a few minutes looking at this and then when we come back we'll continue writing this test. Mm -hmm. So thanks everybody for watching. Uh, thanks also to my guest Kim Grossman. I really appreciate you coming out and I hope we'll do a few more sessions together. Sure, thanks. And uh, I will see everybody out there next time. Thanks again for watching.